One more thing, here is one process is going on. Mm. Okay, one, one more thing, this is going on. So Already six. <laughs> yeah, okay, why, what do you do? You close this thing. Okay. See. Okay, before that, I see. Story class. See, I am telling, not only they are having data type variables. Okay, type of, I mean, I am telling, I am having variables in our program. It is having its own data. So not only having its own data type, sometimes we, we also should know I mean, where it is exactly the variable is storing. So that is called storage class actually. So if we don't specify the storage class of a variable in a declaration part, I mean, I am telling in main in main method, I want to uh, uh, name it as a, uh, uh, int i equal to zero. So if I didn't specifically mention this is what storage class, mm -hmm. then the compiler, what it, is, it will do, the compiler will assume storage class depending upon in, in, in the context in which the variable is used. In I mean depending upon the what context we are using my variable. So it will assign your, uh, I mean, uh, your, for your variable it will assign automatically whatever class it wants to assign. So your compiler will take care of it. But by default variable can be assigned. See if you didn't mention that is defaultly it will, it will consider as a auto. Okay. See that is the thing. I will, I will come to, I will come to that point. Okay. So variables have, I mean, have certain default storage values. I told, I mean, uh, each and every, uh, every variable, it's a have its own default storage class. From C compiler point of view, a variable name identifies some physical location because when you are, when you are telling your variable in your program, so what it will look for some location, some physical location in your memory to store that variable. I'm, I'm, t I'm talking in about a stack right now. So when I define some variable int a or int b or int c, whatever may be the variables, okay, or double or float. So these variables where it will reside, some physical memory it will look, or some physical location I can say in, in terms of memory in the sense, physical location. So, right, consider my variable will go and reside in a stack memory, okay. So whatever variables I am, in, I mean, I'm calling here, that will look for some physical location with the computer where the string bytes represent the variable value is stored. Okay, so suppose I defined int a is equal to 30. So int a, how it will the process the computer can understand? This is the language. What what is the language that that is under? I mean, uh, a, a computer can understand. Machine, machine language. What, what I mean, uh, machine language in terms of what? Binary. 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 That is in in terms of zeros and ones. In, the, in terms of stream of bytes. I mean, stream stream of bits. That is the he is telling. Identify some physical location with the computer where the string of bytes represent the variable value is stored. Mm -hmm. Okay. Suppose you got it. My point. Mm -hmm. What I am trying to say. This is a stack. It will look for some location, physical location. Mm -hmm. On what basis? So you are you are passing int command int a equal to thirty. So it is having the string of bits for that command. So based upon that, what if we look for some physical location and we'll put that value a is equal to 30, that value in that particular location. I can call it as a location in terms of address. Okay. Each and uh, each and every block will contain its own address. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it will automatically assign some address for that uh, in, uh, in integer value and it will put that value in that stack. Got it, no? Mm -hmm. So like that, the variable will be stored. So that is the thing. So there are basically two kinds of locations in a computer. I told there are two locations. I mean, uh, either I mean it can be stored in a memory, or it can be stored in a CPU mm -hmm. registers. So CPU uh, memory in the sense is stack. It has its own registers at the same time CPU registers. So these are the two places where where a variable a variable can store. Okay. So now consider uh, it is the variables storage class that determine in which those of two locations the value is stored. And I mean based upon storage class. So my variable will go on residing any of these two. Okay. If I mention this, this storage class name, so this will go into residing in a, uh, this a CPU or memory. 
like that based upon my storage block it will go and reside mm. in a storage location i mean uh, yes cpu or registers memory memory or cpu registers so now there are exactly what is meant by storage class what it tells to us exactly i mean a storage class what is exactly it means means for so where the value would be stored correct no what i am talking about exactly i want to store some value either i should store in a memory or i would like to store in a cpu register so that will be decided by which one storage class. storage class so what will be the initial value of the variable so this storage classes will define an initial value for that variable so if you define int a if you uh, some if you mention one storage class name for that it will define initial value automatically that cannot be changed okay so but later on when whenever i mean uh, your program is i mean further processing then if you define that variable from that point that value to another value it will be changed okay initially either it's having some value or it will pre- i mean it will have some garbage value that uh, we will talk it later when it comes to program okay so what is the scope of that variable so if i define some variable yesterday I, I i spoke about the scope of variable i told mm-hmm. if i define some mm-hmm. value so that will be local to the that block mm-hmm. once see this is a loop Yes, here, see, uh, here in main, I have two variables, okay, the double variables. So once I see uh, when compiler comes to here, the way va- the variable value will be initially garbage value. Okay, let let us consider. I mean, I mean, not consider. It, it will not. Whenever you give, if you doesn't give any initial value, I told it it will hold garbage yeah, value. Yeah. Whenever you define some value initial value that have that initial value. Okay, so when compiler comes to here, so this. double having the red okay i mean uh, double variable red so this having initially some garbage value because you not i mean you didn't initialize some value for that and if you comes to pi it's having 3.14 so the value of this variables i mean red and pi will exist within this block only once your compiler comes out of this block so the value of this variables will be suppose you depend red here So I mean that won't I mean if you are if you want to utilize this red uh, value here or if you want to utilize uh, pi symbol here so it won't it won't I mean it won't take that value so it will use it will throw some error okay like that so there will be scope and the life life of a variable so four things it will tell yeah what is that first initially what is that initial initial what what exactly it will uh, tell us storage uh, storage class. I am telling storage class will be there. Mm-hmm. What exactly it is telling to us? Go store the value. Yeah. yeah. Where to store? Where to store. Yeah. Then the CPU. The, what is the, the initial value, value of that variable? Yeah. Okay. Depending and upon the initial value. Uh, no, no, no. It will, it will actually uh, define the initial value okay. for for that. Once you write some uh, storage class for mm-hmm. that variable, it will define either it is having a zero or a garbage mm-hmm. value mm-hmm. like that. So, uh, so storage classes can define a initial value. Either it's a garbage value or a zero value. Initial value zero. So like that. So now I am talking about what exactly storage class tells tells us in the sense one once it is where it has to store the variable and the second point the initial value for that variable. So these two things are main important. And the third point is what scope scope of your variable and the lifetime and the 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 existence of that variable. Yeah, uh, I mean, how long the variable I mean could be existed in my in my class? Yeah. Okay, that are four things. One is where to store initial value, scope, life. These four things will be defined by a storage class for a variable. Got it now? Now I am talking about how many storage classes is there. I told already. Auto auto storage class is there. Automatic automatic actually. And uh, register storage class will be there. And the static storage class will be there. 
and external storage cards will be there. I will talk in detail about each and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, when you write a program, that program in uh, what the double API, okay, instead of sorry, what uh, I start int a is equal to four. Mm. Okay. Mm. So where is you store it? That's why you know if you didn't specifically mention. But no, in sixty or memory. That's why I'm talking right now. Oh, so yeah. if int a is equal to zero in the sense. Okay. Zero. So you didn't specify any. Right. A, any any storage yeah, class yeah, for that. Yeah. So it will automatically consider it yeah, as a yeah, auto operating. storage yeah. class. Yeah. So I will tell you exactly each storage class, uh, how, what kind of memory it will hold okay. for a variable and what kind of uh, initial value it will assign for a variable and where exactly the scope of variable will exist and where exactly the lifetime of that, I mean, life uh, life of that variable will, uh, will be there. Okay, I will discuss with the example today. Mm -hmm. You will understand that. Okay. So now comes to auto storage, automatic storage class. So what is the keyword we will use? Uh, suppose I have, uh, see better I will open a textbook and then I will show the example. Uh, 